Uh, hi, everyone, and thanks for kind of listening to my talk. Um, my name is Abdullah Sivas. I am a PhD student at University of Waterloo. And this is a joint work with my supervisor, Sandar Rabargan, and our colleague, Ben Saatver. And the title of my talk is, as Jacob said, Air for AS, Space Time Hybridizable Discontinuous Galactic Method. What you should wait from this talk? What are the highlights of this talk? Uh, we use hybridizable uh, discontinuous galactic and finite element methods in both space and time. So space and time treated in the same way, unlike classical time stepping methods. Uh, this gives us a natural setting for lo locally time different, uh, locally different time steps. It's it also makes trivial uh, it, adaptive mesh refinement trivial. We can also do moving domains and space-time HDG automatically satisfy geometric conservation law, which is basically, uh, which basically says that if you have uniform flow through your domain and if your mesh changes or your domain changes, that uniform flow should re remain uniform. But um, that is the discretization part of the uh, part of our work. Uh, how about the solution part? We use AIR. It's an algebraic multigrid method designed for advective problems. And if you think about it, time derivative is just constant, uh, constant advection in time direction. So, and AIR is fast and scalable solver for advection dominated and hy hyperbolic problems. And if we consider time derivative as constant advection in time direction, it becomes a fast and scalable solver for advection dominated and hyperbolic bolic space time problems. So that's awesome. Uh, let me start by introducing what do I mean by space time because uh, in our research group, we have seen that it is used in many different contexts. We use it a little bit differently too. This is uh, time dependent advection diffusion equation in its normal form. You have your time derivative, you have your velocity field times um, gradient of the solution, you have your uh, viscosity diffusivity constant and diffusion term. Uh, we are going to do moving domains, so shape of our domain depends on time. We are also, of course, our boundary conditions now depend on time together with the boundaries themselves. And for Newton boundary conditions, uh, Neumann boundary conditions, we are going to use this formulation, formulation where zeta is an indicator determining whether a boundary is an inflow boundary or an outflow boundary. This is going to be our Drichler boundary condition and this is going to be our initial condition. That was the classical time dependent advection diffusion equation. How do we rewrite it to a space time form? We first uh, change uh, the domain. Now we are not working on omega t. We are going to work on calligraphic e, where calligraphic e is set of triples t, x, y, such that x, y is in uh, our time dependent domain for, any give, for a given time. And uh, then we are going to define our space-time velocity field where the spa space velocity field is appended by one. And space-time nabla operator where space nabla operator is appended by partial derivative with respect to t. That makes our uh, formulation a little bit more compact. Now this is just a diffusive term in space, uh, sorry, advective term in space time. And this is a diffusive term in space. And you, this is important. This nabla is still, and this nabla and this nabla are still only defined in space. Also, the other thing to pay attention to is I don't have an initial condition anymore. My initial condition will be applied uh, to, as a Neumann boundary condition, and it's going to be an inflow boundary condition through same zeta. Now, that is, the, that is the formulation, but how do you implement this? You can take two approaches or anything between those two approaches. 
First one is the slap by slap approach. This is similar to classical time stepping methods with, but with extra, extra properties or you can do all at once. What is the difference between these two? If you have your space type domain and time moves in this direction, and space moves in this direction, um, if you have your space time domain, you can cut it into slabs. And after you cut into slabs, you can basically uh, solve on each slab because you have the initial condition here. You can solve for this one, find it, and use this as an initial condition for the next slab. With all at once, you can do something fancier. You can just mesh it however you want. What does this allow you? You can have locally large time steps or locally small time steps. It doesn't matter, it is just meshing. It is, it is, naturally, it is naturally done. Uh, to compare these two, a slab by slab is again, similar to classical time stepping methods. But however, it is still a space time method. So by inheritance, it can naturally ha handle moving domain problems. And it requires less memory compared to all at once approach because you just need to solve one slab and you don't have to mesh the whole domain at once. With all at once approach, you can do non-uniform, non-structured meshes of the space time domain that allows you to take again, locally large or locally small time steps. In addition to that, you can do local time refinement or coarsening through a space-time adaptive mesh refinement. And this is again trivial, this, this becomes natural. And another added benefit is hyperbolic and advection dominated problems are, become really easy to solve using air multigrid method. This is in contrast to other classical time stepping methods where diffusion dominated problems are easier to solve, but in space time formulation, it's actually hyperbolic problems are easier to solve. I just, I wanna show you a, uh, a few pictures of the space time approach. Uh, time moves in this direction again, and space is the horizontal direction. You see that our domain is changing as time goes uh, up. And other thing I want you to notice is this is just a three-dimensional domain. This is this is nothing special in if you think about it. And this three are um, slices of this domain at different time steps. Uh, I think this is zero, this is 0 0.4, and this is 0 0.8. And with slap by slap approach, these are actually really thin slices. They are still three-dimensional meshes, but three d thin slices. And this is the AMR uh, feature I was talking about. This green uh, bar going up is the non-zero part of the solution, and solution is a uniformly zero everywhere else. And red color denotes how dense the mesh is around that point. And you see that away from the non-zero part of the solution, Mesh is not that, uh, but around the, the non-zero part of the solution, it is very red and we have quite a few elements there. And another thing to notice is here, particularly if you pay attention to this element, you take very large, uh, time, uh, very large time step. However, here you can imagine, you cannot see any of them, but time steps are really simple. That was the general idea. Now, this is a little bit of the technical stuff. Uh, we use uh, hybridizable discontinuous galactic and finite element in space time. So that means that we use hybridizable discontinuous galactic and finite element method to discretize both space and time. But what is a hybridizable discontinuous galactic method? The idea is you have element unknowns and in addition to element unknowns, you have facet unknowns. And element unknowns are not directly coupled. They are coupled to facet unknowns, and that is the only way they communicate. This gives us a unique bilinear form where you have interior-interior interact 
interactions, face interior interactions, face face interactions, and interior face interactions. And since elemental nodes do not communicate directly with each other, we can actually say something about this matrix corresponding to this part of the bilinear form. It is block diagonal. That being block diagonal, we can solve this first equation easily because A is uh, easily invertible. Then we can plug the solution U into second e equation to get this reduced problem where we solve for lambda only. This is summarized here. So this is the reduced, uh, if you will, sure complement matrix. Uh, this is what we are solving for, and this is the reduced right-hand side. After we find the lambda, we can just reconstruct the element solution here, and that is what we need. But mm, the question now becomes, how do we solve the reduced linear system? We combine GMRs and AIR, and AIR is, again, an algebraic multigrade method designed for advective problems and big idea with air is rather compared to regular algebraic multigrade methods you don't use uh, transpose of the prolongation operator as the restriction operator but you construct a special restriction operator and this is shown to be efficient and scalable for advection dominated problems it make but this property of it is, makes it a very suitable solver for space-time advection diffusion problems too. And the question is why don't we just use air as the solver but as a preconditioner and GMS as the solver? Two reasons. First one is we want to accelerate the solution. Second one is this is sort of a pre preliminary work for another project we are doing where we solve the Navier-Stokes equations. And there we use air to solve the momentum block and pressure block is treated differently. So this is kind of a proof of concept. Now I want to discuss the algorithm a little bit. And here these tags are important because this is what we measure in time. This setup time, at setup we read, um, refine and partition the mesh and create bilinear and linear forms. Unfortunately, this part is serial. We cannot do anything to parallelize this part. And because of that, we are going to, when we look at the results, actually we will not be getting optimal, uh, optimal scaling. At the assembly, we assemble the reduced problem on the right-hand side. This part is fairly parallel. Solve, we solve the reduced problem for facet unknowns. This part is fairly parallel. And reconstruction is, we just reconstruct the element unknowns from facet unknowns. And this part is actually embracing the parallel because each process, each process can just reconstruct its own solutions. There is they know what face unknowns are, they don't have to communicate with each other. What is the problem we are trying to solve? Again, we have this time dependent problem and this is the, again, time goes this way. And this is the space time domain at once. However, it is maybe not easy to appreciate from this picture. So I, am, I want to show you the slices as time moves on. So as you see, it's a smooth movement. And at point, it is actually very sharp. Like at this point, it creates a very big difference. And the problem parameters. We will have this uh, fixed uh, velocity field. It, is, uh, it doesn't depend on time. It could depend on time. We just choose, chose this for simplicity. We assume that viscosity is constant and it will be 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 6 or 0. 0 just corresponds to a hyperbolic problem. We have two initial boundary conditions, sorry, two initial conditions. One of them is a Gaussian pulse, another one is a discontinuous brick. 
And we solved the problems to four different time horizons between 1 and 16. I want to show you a reference solution. For this reference solution, the viscosity is 10 to the minus 2. So, and the initial condition is Gaussian pulse. You see that it almost immediately diminished and it's rotating around. Uh, and by the time the simulation is done, it's almost zero everywhere except for some part where it is around 0 0.35. Now let me discuss uh, let me discuss our numerical results. First of all, AMR, how effective AMR is. Here, this line is sort of a worst case, and this is sort of a best case. And we don't have uh, a a confession here. We don't have an error estimation estimator for space time HDG, especially on moving domains. On top of that, we don't have uh, how should uh, any theory on how L2 error should behave. So these two lines are the lines I pulled from literature. Uh, they are bounds for other methods, but we see that uh, our AMR, AMR applied to our method is actually pretty parallel to the best case of other methods. And we beat uniform by a significant margin where, where uniform reaches this precision at about uh, two times 10 to the seven point. But here we reach same precision by almost seven, eight times less points. And same for order three. Again, the best case, sorry, worst case and best case and uniform and AMR and AMR dips below and goes above the line, but in average, it is, it is pretty parallel to the best case. Uh, the other question is, how efficient is the air preconditioner? Here you see the viscosity parameter, and these colors um, sort of show that these are uniform refinements, and uh, as it goes from here to he uh, top to bottom, mass size gets smaller. And we see that for the advection dominated regime, number of GM iterations are pretty stable. They don't change much. However, when it becomes more and more diffusion dominated here at this regime, uh, refi from refinement level one to refinement level four, uh, number of iterations almost uh, quadruples and for 10 to the minus one, it actually, uh, for refinement level four, we cannot even converge and uh, for rest of them, there is a significant jump. We see something similar if we use uh, third order polynomials. Again, mass size gets smaller as refinement level goes higher. Uh, for diffusion, for advection dominated problems, number of iterations are pretty fixed for differential, um, Diffusion dominated problems, they skyrocket after a while. This, this is actually a very interesting point because again, for classical time stepping methods, uh, hyper, uh, hyperbolic problems are harder to solve, but in space time formulations, they are almost trivial. Uh, this, is, this is some timing for comparison. We are on 72 processes. We use cubic polynomials here and time horizon is at 16. We see that the setup time is almost three and a half seconds. This is going to have an effect in our strong scaling results. Um, assembly and construction times are small and other than that largest, uh, largest item we spend time on is the solve step. Here, uh, pay attention to uh, the polynomial degree and the viscosity. We see that uh, assembly and reconstruction are following the ideal line, which is as expected. Uh, so uh, plateaued, but that is probably because the matrix size is small and we are using 288 processes at that point. And the total 
speed up is suffering because setup is a pretty big factor dominating the whole to whole uh, problem solution time. By going to uh, cubic polynomials for same viscosity parameter, everything is around the ideal line except for the setup. And same is observed for a new viscosity 10 to the minus 6 uh, order one. Um, so plateaued off, uh, total time is suffering because of the setup time. If we do polynomial order 3, 10 to the minus 6, everything is around the ideal line except for setup. Um, and for hyperbolic, it is actually even more interesting. Um, we see for uh, linear polynomials solve plateaus of, but for cubic polynomials, solve actually has this super, conver uh, super convergence behavior, super linear behavior. Um, and I think this is due to some other effect uh, coming into play, like maybe now the problem fits into the cache or something like that. Uh, but this is also another thing great about a space-time approach because hyperbolic problems, it looks like you can get super linear converged. Of course, that's, that's a little bit of a joke. I don't, I don't think that that's going to be the case in general. Um, yeah, let me move on to the summary. I am about to run out of time. We applied space-time HDG method to an advection diffusion problem on a moving domain. We solved the resulting problem using GMS and AIR. We, show, we, we have seen that AIR is really efficient, especially when we are solving a hyperbolic problem. And we think that there is a higher pro potential of scalability for all at once approach compared to slab by slab approach. Uh, because, uh, or also other classical time stepping methods, because uh, in all at once approach, the, you have better, um, like preconditioner is constructed once. So you don't have to reconstruct the preconditioner and uh, you don't have to do un um, maybe redundant communication all the time. And in our future work, we want to investigate slab by slab approach further. We want to move to stiffer and more nonlinear problems because we think that that's going to improve the um, performance of AMR. And currently we have load balancing issues when using AMR. This is a limitation of our implementation. It is not fault of AMR or the discretization. It is just a coding issue. And Thanks for listening.